You're welcome to yes, Afro Radio. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. <coughs> You've got some great equipment here. You seem to be well, uh, well organised. Thank you very much. And uh, it's great to see a new type of medium starting with the internet. It's, uh, mm. you're, I believe you're the first. So, yeah. so it's a first for Waterford. It's, a, it's, it's first for Waterford. Waterford is always first in everything. Yeah, good news so story. A good news story. Yeah. Tell us about Monster Express being 150 years in existence. Yeah, well, we, we have a book out at the moment, and I was giving a talk in uh, County Kilkenny last week. And uh, it's, uh, it started in 1860. It was a family from. Um, England had come over to and Yall, then they settled in Yall, then they moved to Waterford and they set up this newspaper, kind of a liberal type politics uh, back in those times and Waterford in 1860 was uh, just after the family was getting a little bit better there was a, a number of industries in the city here, there was a shipbuilding industry, there was a pork industry mm -hmm. and, the, and the shipping was really big uh, to England so it was an export trade was, was very important and a big market town. So around 25,000 people were living here then. So ah, but now we have almost uh, 40, 40,000, 40, 45, but then again people live in a greater area, they commute now, so it's uh, maybe a 50 to 100,000. But I think yeah. 100,000 now, yeah, yeah. considering the immigrants. The immigrants, yeah, so it's uh, growing, it's growing, whatever it is growing. Um, so it's, so the book anyway, we detail over decades in 50 year segments, the various kind of political changes in Ireland and economic what changes. What is the book titled? W Waterford Memories. What of our memories, and that is published by the Monster Express yes, newspaper. Yeah. yeah, so you can buy that in the book centre and in your local bookstores. It's available now. It's available now, and it's uh, you can get there's lots of really interesting photographs and you know some good funny stories mm. as well. Like the Monster Express was occupied during the Irish Civil War by the IRA, the, the newspaper wow. office. Yeah. Uh, what year was that? Uh, that was 1922. Was that in the office or yeah, the key? My grandfather, they lived over the premises then. Wow. My father was there and they, they, they came in with pistols and they took over for three days and then the work, when the, the army forces came along they had to leave but, the, the, but they, worked, they worked at the same time producing the paper with the mm. guy, as, as the fellows who had defended were going to take it over. They were, all work, they were all there together for three days still working. Mm. So the men were poorly armed with pistols so they, were, they weren't able to, they, because it's a prominent building they took it over. The, and that it, was the <coughs> period of the rising. The civil war. No, it was after the rising. Mm. It was a, when, when fin, when the Fine Gael party were the the, 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 the previous Fine Gael, they were the government, and there were people who were IRA. They didn't want to. They wanted the six counties, mm. uh, to be part of the new republic, and they didn't get that in the treaty negotiations. So they started an internal mm. war. So Waterford was occupied by these anti-treaty forces. And so the pro treaty were coming down from Dublin, and they took the building on the key to uh, to defend Waterford. But they had only small pistols against artillery. It was a, an unfair fight, really. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened anyway. So the building didn't get damaged, fortunately. So a little bit of machinery. So we detail that in the book and how we survived in the war years. But paper was really short. Mm -hmm. The newspaper is only six pages a week. Ah. So uh, it's a really small, you know. <laughs> so we detail that in, in the book too. Now, is it? It's, yeah, going tabloid, yeah. <laughs> Compact. So we, we detail those points, and uh, then we tell people about the industries of the sixth of Waterford Glass, the show band music era. Mm. There was great music in Waterford. Mm. There was a lot of great sport in Waterford. Mm. So we you read about, say, bands like Tin Lizzy, rhythm and blues bands, and Rory Gallagher. That they came to play in Tremor in Waterford back in the seventies. And the Flamore in Tremor, where Ray Charles played, famous Ray Charles and people like that. So we have a lot of interesting things. There's a kind of a diverse stuff going on at that topics. time. So how do, you, how do you see that period uh, when you're talking of diversity, diverse stuff? You would yeah. see maybe probably um, Irish people, uh, English people predominantly. Yeah. But nowadays, when you're talking of diversity, how do you see what are for the highlight? Uh, that, that Ireland now is many, many uh, nationalities. Uh, I just done an article myself now in the Waterford Institute of Technology, mm. and you know there's like uh, two to three hundred uh, overseas students there, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe one third are from China. Then you have many from the Middle East, 
and then you have people, some from Africa, not many from Nigeria, your country, although well, they go to the UK a lot, <laughs> but uh, they could come perhaps. But yeah, so there's a lot coming there and then many people. That's an open invitation yeah. for you to come yeah. over to Weatherford Institute of Technology yeah. and study. Yeah, and pay money. And I think the, 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 dean, <laughs> of the, to the, country, yeah. I think the dean of the WIT will pay me for that advertising. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, well now, then we have, I suppose, there's been an influx from uh, Eastern Europe. We've mm. had Pol many Polish people, many people from uh, Latvia, Lithuania, to work here from Hungary. Then we've had people seeking asylum here from uh, you know war-torn countries like maybe uh, different African countries. So we've uh, you know, quite, quite a mix. And then we've a lot, I say, students that come and do work visas. So, mm. so there's quite a lot of... Uh, and Waterford, I suppose, over the years, being a poor town, it's probably easier to accept immigrants than maybe smaller towns. Because mm -hmm. we're used to foreign nationalities, like Waterford Crystal was started by Czechs and mm. Germans, you know. Mm. So we're used Did to foreign nationalities. Did you know that? that? I never knew that. Yeah, but I yeah. thought uh, Crystal was founded by a Czech. Czechs. 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 By the Czechs. Yeah, by the Czechs, Czech yeah. Republic, isn't it? In fact, the family were the first founders of it. They're, they're just down the road from here. The oh, Havels, from yeah. our studios, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just like now that, let's yeah. talk briefly, Kiron, about um, this idea of immigrants coming into another country. Yeah. Um, a lot of people come, it could be as a result of uh, being internally displaced in their own country and they come over to another country. Mm -hmm. um, some of these immigrants are already termed as economic migrants. Mm -hmm. Now the idea of economic migration is becoming a reality, especially in Europe today, where recession is biting very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And how would you see it? Would it's you see kind of a difficult time now. now. I see it's a difficult time now, you see, because we have kind of public spending cutbacks. The ability of Ireland now to absorb new immigrants is very limited, I think, mm. because we have, uh, we have a kind of a big gap in the, the public finances. Mm. So that costs money. Mm. So you must have people who are active participants who are contributing to the economy. So you know the, way, you the, visa, the visa situation now is being changed. Yeah. So you have circumstances now where you know people with high skill, like yourself, you know, work working at the Irish staff, mm. where they need the language skills and particular computer skills, and you know there's a need for people there. But it's hard now when there's so many out of work, mm. when there's four hundred thousand out of work for to be continuing immigration unless they're really working, because it's it's. Uh, there's a, you know, the, it's, the finances aren't there. We're talking about immigration on a global yeah. perspective now. Mm -hmm. We would see loads of Irish people emigrating. Yeah, that's, moving that's what's happening. I've got about yeah. six of my colleagues moving yeah. out of Ireland. Yeah, yeah, that's happening. From Germany yeah. to, I mean, well, quite loads of people are moving to where they think the, the, work the is. grass is yes. greener. Yeah. And then, would it that be same as economic migration that a lot of people from war town countries yeah. or from African countries or yeah. from, from poverty ridden countries yeah. come from. This is what Ireland is experiencing now. Yeah. Moving away. I from suppose, yeah, but you, the country has to be kind of ready to absorb it, you know. And mm. it to, now at the moment it's kind of probably a bit difficult. Mm. But maybe there are other countries that can absorb that, like Canada, Australia, US, maybe U, US. But Ireland at the moment is, will, will find it, it tougher. To, are you know? Are you kind of apprehensive about the fact that well, we probably few had qualified Irish citizens, yeah. young generation, they are moving away from the I country. I think it's not a bad thing. It's not too bad mm -hmm. because they'll get better. They'll get good experience, mm -hmm. and it's better for them to be doing something than sitting here doing nothing. You know, mm -hmm. that's terrible for the. For so the you mentality. think it's better to move when? But when, when there is work, or else create their own work here. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're inventive and set up a little business. If they can, or maybe they can do teleworking. They could do some some service work remotely from their houses to, you know, with the internet or some perhaps as ways of getting self-employment. But it's better to go and seek work than to be sitting there waiting for it. That's a very very uh, tiny piece of advice. You could set up teleworking from your house where you are, and uh, Kira was is an acute entrepreneur. He won't pay for that. I want to thank you very much for okay. coming into the studio. Okay. From the Niger to the Congo, all through the Kagera to Limpopo, sonorous percussion of nature, Afro Radio.